counter function with respect to a set of desired model parameters that control how well a model explains the data. Finding good parameters can be phrased as an optimization problem. Three examples include one, linear regression, where we look at curve fitting problems and optimize the linear weight parameters to maximize the likelihood. Two, neural network autoencoders for dimensionality reduction and data compression, where the parameters are the weights and biases of each layer, and where we minimize a reconstruction error by repeated application of the chain rule. Three, Gaussian mixture models for modeling data distributions where we optimize the location and shape parameters of each mixture component to maximize the likelihood of the model. Central to our study on calculus is the concept of a function. Function f is a quantity that relates two quantities to each other. Here, these quantities are typically inputs x in Rd and targets f of x, which we assume are real valued if not otherwise stated. Here, Rd is called the domain of f, and the function values f of x are the image or codomain of f. We often write f colon rd to r to specify a function that maps things from rd into r. A function f assigns every input x exactly one function value f of x. Now a definition. The difference quotient, dq, is equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x. And this computes the slope of a secant line through two points, x f of x and x plus delta x comma f of x plus delta x. We can see an image of this in the figure top right corner. The difference quotient can also be considered the average slope of f between x and x plus delta x, if we assume x to be linear. In the limit, as delta x approaches zero, we obtain a tangent of f at x, assuming that f is differentiable. The tangent is then the derivative of f at x. So the derivative is df by dx, and is equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero of f of x, and represents the slope of a tangent line of f at the point x comma f of x. The derivative of f points in the direction of steepest ascent of f. The other series is a representation of a function f as an infinite sum of terms. These terms are determined using the derivatives of f evaluated at x0. So let f be c infinity. That means it's infinitely differentiable, with f taking real numbers and mapping to real numbers. The Taylor series for f at x0 is defined as t sub infinity of x equals the sum k equals 0 to infinity of the kth derivative of f evaluated at x0 divided by k factorial times x minus x0 to the power of k. When x0 equals 0, we call this series a Maclaurin series. The function f is called analytic if f of x is equal to its Taylor series. Now for approximations, we'll use a Taylor series with only a finite number of terms. In general, a Taylor polynomial of degree n uh, is a pretty good approximation 
for a lot of different functions. And those functions don't have to be polynomials. However, if you use a Taylor polynomial to, to approximate a polynomial, you only need a finite number of terms since f, uh, the kth derivative of f, will eventually vanish. Let's try an example. We'll take a look at the Taylor series approximation for f of x equals sine x at x equals zero. So we begin by looking at f of zero, which is sine zero, and that's zero. f prime of zero is cosine zero, and that's equal to one. f double prime of zero is equal to negative sine of zero, which is equal to zero. The third derivative of f at zero is negative cosine of zero, which is negative one, and so on. So we see that even derivatives are zero and odd derivatives are either one or negative one, which tells us that the Taylor series for sine x has to look something like zero plus x plus zero minus x cubed over three factorial plus zero plus x to the five over five factorial plus zero minus x to the seven over seven factorial, which we can compactly write as negative one to the k divided by two k plus one factorial times x to the two k plus one. Now to see how well this actually fits our data, take a look at the following diagram. We can see that for n equals three, we have a pretty decent representation of y equals sine x close to zero. And in fact, as we increase our n, the approximation gets better and better. And we can see that if we were to take n to infinity, we would actually have uh, a pretty perfect representation of y equals sine x. So the more terms you take, the better your approximation is away from your x zero. The following four basic differentiation rules should be familiar to you from calculus. The product rule, the derivative of f times g is equal to the derivative of f times g plus derivative of g times f. The quotient rule, the derivative of f over g is equal to f prime times g minus g prime times f divided by g squared. The sum rule, the derivative of f plus g is equal to the derivative of f plus the derivative of g. And the chain rule, the derivative of g of f of x is equal to g prime of f of x times f prime of x. In our next video, We'll talk about partial differentiation and how that relates to the differentiation we know from basic calculus.